know, I think spending your life studying the natural world takes a certain kind of person. And it's really important that we continue that in the next generation. I think for someone to commit to the natural world and figure out how to balance their life so they can study a species or an ecosystem, contribute to that process, and also retain a healthy personal life is a challenge, but it can be done. The benefits of doing the work is, number one, you're contributing to the planet. You're leaving something good behind and making a difference. And uh, number two, you're going to share that information and hopefully it'll help in the preservation, conservation and awareness of our planet, which we desperately need to stay healthy. People often ask me, is it worth impacting the animals being out of here? Obviously, we potentially influence them by our presence in the water, trying to document their behavior and follow their lives. And in my early years, I was at a conference in San Francisco at the California Academy of Sciences where Jane Goodall was speaking. And I actually asked her a question from the audience. I asked her, given what you know now after being out there, I guess it was 20 years at that point, would you do it again? Was being present in their lives and influencing their lives in potentially positive and negative ways worth it. And she said, well, we need information about species out in the wild and someone has to be doing it. So it's important to have information and to tell their story so people can be made aware of what there is to say. Dr. Denise Herzing started the Wild Dolphin Project in 1985. When we get in the water to do our work, we typically have multiple tools. Uh, I usually have a video camera, which has a hydrophone for sound and behavior collection. Sometimes that video camera is attached to a computer for high frequency sound collection. Much of her research is done in the Bahamas because the shallow sandbanks provide safety during the day for dolphins to rest and socialize. The white sandy bottoms also protect them from natural predators such as sharks because of the clear visibility. The world of the researcher is much more difficult than it looks. Weather is a key factor, and here in the Bahamas it was no different. As the boat rolled and pitched, Denise remained calm and steadfast, deep in her research. Uh, same with our videotape. We watch it every night, we log it, and grab shots off of it, the sound. So technology is definitely critical. Denise monitors the dolphin speech patterns, which occurs through a series of whistles and clicks. And as the sky gave way to a brilliant blue day, I saw why Denise does what she does. She truly cares. This is uh, Trimie and Tyler, mother and daughter. And Tyler's a little unusual because she's been with her mother for five or six years. Usually they leave when they're about three because the mother gets pregnant. But Trimie, the mother, has not got pregnant until this year. So she's a little dependent on her mom. She should be hanging out with the juvenile. Grown up with them, at least uh, Tyler. And try me, her first offspring, she, apparently she didn't know how to be a, a very good mother because her first baby she had that we know of, it was wild. It was like what I would call shark bait. It wouldn't stay with try me. It was vocal all the time, and sure enough, it disappeared. He would, this little guy, Tango, would show up without his mother. So that's not a good thing if you're a dolphin cow. So she's apparently learned to be a pretty good mother going to be mother again, probably next summer, so very exciting. I asked Denise, what can we learn from the dolphins? And she responded that by observing dolphins in their natural habitat, we can learn much about conflict and cooperation, respect and learning, and civility towards each other, values that are greatly needed in the world today.
Ace is a true selfless hero, a guardian of the sea, and Explorer salutes you.